Ok, në këtë episod të podcast do të flasim në anglisht, po sigurisht do të flasim për Shqiprin, ajo është një grua e rëndësishme këtu, është greke nga Athina, por shumë e dashuruar me Shqiprin. Welcome, Katerina Stathaki, or as everyone calls you, Katja. I pose my invitation to you since uh, as soon as you get the leadership of Vodafone here in Albania. I want to say, Katja, it was uh, interesting for me to have a talk uh, with you also as a woman leading the biggest technology company here in Albania. Are you a fan of podcasts in general? Do you like uh, podcasts? I know that Vodafone is good, <laughs> even in the future. So, first of all, thank you very much for having me here today. It took us a long time to meet, but I think now is a good time for us to meet because we have a lot to talk about and I have some experience from Albania. So yes, um, I like podcasts. Uh, this is my first uh, podcast actually uh, with Image. So thank you very much for, for giving me this opportunity. And uh, well, I've done my uh, research as well. Uh, and I know that uh, you're probably the best in Albania to do this, so I'm very <laughs> happy to be here. Um, as for Vodafone uh, being Kudo, yes, we are everywhere. Uh, we are everywhere around the world, but we are everywhere in Albania. We're everywhere where people are connected and we're everywhere where people want a safe and secure communication. And we're there where people also need us. So, yes, Kudome Vodafone. <laughs> uh, good publicity. <laughs> <laughs> Have to, it yeah, comes yes. with a role. Eh? <laughs> if you don't do it, who else? We live in this world of communication, you know? Are you a person that stays a lot in your phone? Group chats, talking, WhatsApp, Instagram, Twitter, I don't know. Yeah, every day, all day. <laughs> I mean, you know, communication is, is probably one of the most important things since mankind uh, evolved, you know, mm -hmm. so today it's, uh, it's amazing how you can talk, how you can see pictures with relatives who are in the United States, uh, you can talk with your friends everywhere around the world, you can share mm -hmm. your experiences, uh, you can work remotely, so all of this is done by technology and, uh, you know, the communication technologies overall, so uh, I'm all day, every day on a phone, in front of a screen and it's the same for everybody today, I think, and mostly for the new generation. And what about your son? Oh, my son, I have to do a surgery every night to take his iPad from his hands, you know. And he's a very happy boy and, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's like all the boys and girls today, hooked up with technology. He has a phone, he has his uh, uh, computer for the school and everything. So technology everywhere. Okay. I want to turn back at the first moment when you knew uh, you were proposed to be a CEO. Mm -hmm. I know that... Uh, being a CEO, it's something big. Nobody is going to say no. <laughs> but uh, when you knew that you were coming, the destination was Albania. Uh, were you happy? Because, you know, we are, you were close to home. Albania is so close. Uh, maybe you know some Albanians in Athens uh, during your life. One million of us, they live there from uh, 30 years now. Yeah, so I mean, for to, to the first part of your question, you know, I started very small in Vodafone in terms of I was doing a very, a very um, small role. I was an expert uh, in the value added services field and I grew up inside Vodafone to be offered the role of a CEO. Uh, so naturally, when you get a role of a CEO inside Vodafone and Vodafone is a very structured company, in every country, they have the same uh, standards, the same, uh, you know, uh, levels of work, of, of cooperation and everything. Uh, of course, this is a big honor. So I was very happy uh, to be given the role of the CEO. Uh, now, uh, I have to be very honest with you, uh, and I'm always honest with these things. Before coming here, I, although I had Albanian friends in Greece, I did not know very much about Albania. Really? I did not know. How come? Um, well, you know, I mean, you know the media in every country, mm. and I, I love the media, by the way, but, <laughs> but sometimes, you know, they're always exaggerating the bad things over the good things, you know, and 
there was not very much know, known even, like what is happening in Albania? What is the growth of this country? How is this country progressing after all the years of, uh, of the regime that you mm -hmm. had here? Uh, not real information. And uh, the people I've known in, uh, back in Greece, and I still know, um, they didn't talk very much about Albania, but when they did, they always did it with pride. So um, when I came here, I have to say it was a wonderful surprise for me, a very positive surprise. And now I can say I don't have a few Albanian friends. I think I have many Albanian friends. So, <laughs> so I'm very happy to be here, uh, you know, leading the company and living here uh, in Tirana. Yes, but I know something about your gardener. He's an Albanian. Ah, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, Mr. Kiriakos, he comes from uh, Saranda, from the <laughs> villages around Saranda. I don't know which one, I don't remember it. Um, uh, he's my gardener in Greece. Eh? Yes. Uh, he uh, is, uh, I always call him a, a plant whisperer. He loves plants, he talks to them. He's probably the best, best, the very best uh, gardener that there can be. And even him, he didn't talk to me very much. When I went back the first time, he came up to me anxious, you know, last July, you know, well, how did you like Albania? How was it? And I said, Kiriakos, fantastic. You, you know, your country is amazing. There's so much growth there. There's so much vibe, so much opportunity, so much energy. So why don't you guys talk about Albania? Ah, oh, yeah, we go back and, you know, but, but I said to him, you need to be, you know, the biggest uh, ambassadors of your country outside your country because there's many of you in Greece, right? We are in November. November is our independence uh, month and uh, we are very close to the, um, our 110th uh, anniversary. And, uh, you know, uh, our nation, uh, Katia, has been through a lot. Uh, we made it alive and we made it to safeguard our roots and our language. But still, uh, not only Albania, but uh, it seems like the world is living a lot of stress. A lot of stress because we have uh, the war in Ukraine. People, uh, after the pandemic, uh, they changed a bit. And now, in Albania, uh, it looks like people, young people, uh, the young generation, they are eager to go and to live and to find a better life abroad, like it was 13 years before with uh, Kiriakos, that I think that in Albania they name it, uh, they call it Chiriako. Chiriako, okay. <laughs> I will call him Chiriako when I'm back. <laughs> and uh, what do you think about this desire for emigration? So, I mean, listen, I, I think that, uh, you know, first of all, I want to say happy 110th anniversary uh, for your country, for your Independence Day, your Flag Day. Um, I, I didn't know, as I said to you, very much about Albanian history before I came here. In the past uh, 16 months, I got to know a lot of things and I can un understand much more about the journey the Albanians have gone through. I can understand it. I cannot claim that I know it, but I can understand uh, the struggles that they've been through. And uh, I can only say that I admire them for where they are now because it hasn't been so long ago that they have been uh, even living in democracy. So um, I will be here to, to celebrate this with you on uh, the 28th and the 29th. Now, uh, going to the situation worldwide today, I would say that we are living the perfect storm. So we came out of a pandemic. Uh, we, there was a war in Ukraine. So just as we were coming out of the pandemic, there was a war in Ukraine. Suddenly everybody, you know, um, uh, was shocked. Then we have the energy crisis as a result of that or as a result of other things as well. And the inflation, the cost of living. So it's four things that have not happened in recent history altogether, all of them affecting all of Europe and the entire world. And um, of course, this cannot leave Albania unaffected. It doesn't leave any country unaffected for that matter. It doesn't uh, leave the most powerful and the richest countries unaffected. Uh, so in this respect, I think that uh, many people uh, are looking to get a better way of life. And 
Uh, one thing that the pandemic did, it has accelerated technology and it has accelerated the opportunity to work abroad uh, while uh, living in your own country. So I would say that yes to immigration, because I come from a country that has had multiple ways of immigration in the past 100 years, even uh, seven, eight, nine years ago, we had a brain drain of 450,000 of our most productive people in Greece leaving Greece because of the economic crisis. Uh, thank God some of them are coming back uh, now. Um, and I think it's, it's only uh, natural that people, when they live in places where the borders are easier to cross, it's only natural that people will seek a better life. Uh, now for me, because I'm a very positive person, I think that you can even can see tell. this in a, in a positive way. Mm. So people who, who go away, they get different uh, pictures of life. They learn things different than they are being done here or in Greece or in any other countries they go away from. And if they come back, when they come back, they bring back a lot of new things that can be applied here and that can help the, the country prosper. Um, but I would go back to really everybody and us trying, and uh, we have a big role to play there as a technology company, trying to keep especially the young people here. The young people need to know that once they have digital skills and once they acquire digital skills, they can work from Albania, from this wonderful, beautiful country, for a company that's in the UK, that's in the US, that's in Germany. So they don't really need to leave home to make a better living. And I think this is where, let's say, the, um, the work uh, should be focused. And I think also, I see the government is focusing now on digital skills, they understand it. But we in the private sector, we also have to, uh, have to uh, work on that. And uh, especially technology companies like ours, uh, we need digitally skilled people to survive. So um, I think that uh, investing in digital skills, investing in digital will really take the country, country forward. Yes, this is very important. When I was a student, since I was a student, I wanted to become successful. And uh, I was open at the time being uh, a Vodafone agent uh, as, uh, as well as doing uh, fairs. But I missed the chance <laughs> at the time. And here I am interviewing the CEO herself. As we were talking about uh, youth and young generation, how is it to work for Vodafone? I still have that curiosity. Ah, I would say one word and it's not, you know, it's not because I'm the CEO of Vodafone, it really comes from inside. Exciting. Mm -hmm. I have been working for Vodafone for 21 years now. I've done 10 different jobs. I've loved this journey. I've learned a lot. I've grown as a person. And this is not just me, you know, Vodafone is, an, is, a, is a learning environment. It's a very fast-paced environment. All the new technologies, all the new trends, even uh, you know the the hybrid uh, work of uh, way of working, we have introduced it to this country. So today, our people work 60% at the office and 40% from where they want. So it can be another office, it can be in the park, it can be uh, at their home. The mothers can go and pick up their children. Uh, and then continue working. So uh, this is important, you know, because it is important to work in an environment that respects you, that helps you grow. And uh, the good thing also about working for a company like Vodafone, and especially for Vodafone that is very structured, is that you have a lot of opportunities to do different jobs inside the country, but also to travel around the Vodafones in the world and get a job there get experience and bring it back to the country. And this is this we're doing a lot. So we have a lot of Albanians currently working in Germany for Vodafone, working in Luxembourg, work, working in the UK. At some point in time, they will come back, they will bring back the knowledge and, you know, they are growing within this environment. Can you give me some uh, characteristic that represent uh, the Albanian employee? Ah, okay, well, 
Um, talking about the Vodafone employees, um, uh, I think first of all they're an amazing team. So mm -hmm. I'm very fortunate to have found this team here. Uh, they are very hungry to learn new things, to, to, to do things, to progress. You can see it everywhere, you know, in everything they do. They are very loyal. Uh, they uh, want to try out new things. And it is very important also for me to show them that, you know, you can try out new things and you can fail in some things and you learn from them and you move on because if you don't fail, you mm. don't move on, you know. <laughs> so, uh, and I can say overall what I have witnessed from the people that I've seen in Albania, uh, going around, going to different shops, you know, uh, of Vodafone, going to the supermarket, they are people who are hungry to do more, you know. So uh, I think this is the basis of progress, you know. People who are who want to do more, who are looking around for opportunities, and uh, we as big companies, we need to help them in this process. Something to correct? Do we have? Ah, uh, correct. I don't know if it's about correcting. It's also something that something I see to change. very much in my fellow Greeks. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of complaining going around, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, this one is not good, that one is not good. Okay, it's not good, you know. It's just life. Not everything can be perfect. The thing is, for me always, and this is my stance in life, yes, I will see it. Maybe I will complain also uh, for a short period of time, but then move on, you know. Look at what you can change. Look at the difference that you can bring in the system. You know, the system will not uh, uh, make itself better on its own. We are the system. We're part of the system. So we all need to do something. You know, don't throw a paper on the ground if you don't want to see the road dirty. Uh, you know, clean up something. Uh, plant a tree if you want trees, if you don't want to walk in, in the sun. So there's so many things we can do and we can change. Of course, the official system needs to go along us, uh, but I think um, I feel better inside when I feel empowered to do things because I cannot wait from the people around me to change things. I want to change the world. So it, little by little, it doesn't have to be a revolution. You know, it can be <laughs> very small things that you do every day to improve your life and, by the way, to improve your mental uh, um, balance. Sorry, Katia, <laughs> Katerina. Uh, I love Greeks. I love Greece. It's a beautiful country with beautiful people. But hearing you today, um, you seem to me more like a German <laughs> 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 when you were talking with this kind of discipline, you know, and uh, this um, optimistic spirit that you have. Maybe this is from Greece. So, yes, yes. so I'm, um, you know, when, uh, when I was seven and a half years old, my family uh, moved to Germany. Oh. Yes, uh, my parents were both teachers in uh, primary school. So <laughs> they went on an assignment to teach in Greek schools for five years. There's a big Greek community in Germany, as you know. Everywhere. <laughs> yes, um, there's more Greeks outside uh, Germany as Albanians outside Albania. Um, so, so we went there and, uh, you know, at a very, very young age, I, I was introduced to this structured way of thinking of the Germans and the structured way that the whole society is working. Uh, whether there is a government, there is no government, it doesn't matter. The, the, the society is structured, they abide by laws. So I think I'm combining this with my Greek uh, how, temperament, so that I wouldn't why. say the Greek, I would say the Balkan temperament, because we're very similar in this, yes. uh, in this corner of, of the world. And, uh, and I think, you know, combining a little bit of organization and structure with the passion and, you know, the flexibility that we have uh, in, in the Balkan area, I think that can really produce uh, good out outcomes. Now, I was uh, recalling something. Uh, I have you here and I would like to ask you, how come Greeks, everywhere they go, they have created, they have built their own neighborhoods? 
Um, I would say this was the case maybe in the 50s, the 60s and mm. the 70s. You know, when they left Greece, it was very secluded back then. You have mm -hmm. to think about it, no airplanes or very little. It was a huge luxury. Mm. So they arrived, uh, let's say, in Canada or in New York or in Germany um, because one of their relatives went there. So obviously, you know, they were choosing to live together because they were feeling suddenly coming from a very small country and from a village, suddenly being, I don't know, New York, Chicago, it was immense, you know. It, you have to think about it, I think, from the eyes of back then versus our eyes of today. Mm -hmm. We're traveling, there's the internet, we see everything before we actually see it. And I mean, my, my aunt, the, the, the mother, uh, the, the sister of my father, she uh, emigrated to the US uh, in 1964. So obviously one girl alone back then, she would go to live with other Greeks, you know? Okay. And then they would marry <laughs> Greeks. And then, you know, it's my big fat Greek wedding. Yes. <laughs> I love that movie. Yes. <laughs> but it's not anymore like this. It's not anymore like this. I think they are becoming also citizens of the world now. Wow. Yes, so. I don't like this. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe better to There's be... There's good and bad things around it yes, always. In everything. Yes, yes, true. Let's talk about Albania. Okay. I've uh, seen you that you, you've become, I said at the beginning, that you've become a, an influencer in promoting Albanians and Albania. What do you see that it is very special and unique here? I came here and I was not prepared for the beauty of this country. And maybe you Albanians, you're used to it, but somebody who does not know anything about Albania or doesn't know Albania can only be mesmerized. From the north to the south, there is amazing places to go. I mean, I, I will never forget on the 14th or 15th of, of, uh, of April this year, uh, we went with the car to uh, the dam that leads uh, up to Valbona. When I went on the ferry, I felt really, oh my God, this is like what paradise looks like. <laughs> it was simply amazing. Then you come to the valley of Valbona and it's so quiet and it's so mesmerizing. And, and you're thinking, why the hell is this not something like Kstat, you know? Why are not so many tourists here? By the way, don't make it anything like Shtar, right? <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, there were so few people there. And, you know, we stayed there at a very nice hotel in wooden huts, eating geese eggs. Where do you get this in the world? This is simply amazing. Then I went, I saw the blue eye, this beautiful nature around it. I just wanted to jump in. They helped me back. They said it's very cold. So thank God I didn't. Um, we <laughs> no, went to Korcha, <laughs> to Voskopoi. I mean, you know, to Dermi and, and Saranda and Jirokasa. Everything, everywhere Albania, even San Jerje on the back of the mountain. So beautiful, you know. And you get to eat fantastic food everywhere, whether it is expensive or very cheap in a very small restaurant where we went uh, outside Berati, somebody sent us there. Uh, we would never have found it on our own. You can say names. Uh, from, uh, we went to I the winery mind. of Chobo and oh, uh, the owner sent us there. It was a good friend of his and they're eating. I mean, we ate amazing chicken for a ridiculous price. And what was the price? Uh, well, we were like 10 people and we paid uh, less than 50 euro. I mean, you know, it's, it's the things that you get. And it's, by the way, it's not about the price. It's about the hospitality, the quality, the eating uh, cheese that has been produced outside, which is, you cannot find it in the world. You go to the supermarket and you eat good cheese, fantastic cheese. Oh, you have feta cheese. Feta cheese, fantastic. But I will never forget... Uh, the first time I ate white cheese in San Jerje, which reminded me when I was seven years old at the village where my father was born and the shepherd was bringing it to us and we were eating it with, with warm bread. So these pictures and these smells, you don't have them. And I think Albania is really a hidden jewel 
and it needs to come to life. How? But please do not make the mistakes of overbuilding and of overexploiting the land. So keep some of this tradition of this warmth that this hospitality because this is really a very unique, um, very unique uh, uh, experience here. Some mistakes are done now, but yeah. let's hope for the best. Mistakes are part of life. Yes. <laughs> you can correct them in the future. What is the best food that you found here in Albania? The best, the best one? Uh, crudo by far. Oh. There is no crudo in the world. Really? As in Albania. No, not in the, in the showcasing it, in the presentation, not in the quality, definitely not in the price. I mean, you know, it's, uh, I come from a country that is surrounded yes. by the Aegean, uh, Ionian Sea, the Aegean Sea, a lot of fish, everything. I've even eaten crudo in, uh, in other parts of the world, across the Atlantic, no. Albanian crudo, top notch, top notch. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I like also <laughs> souvlakis. Yeah, souvlaki is uh, <laughs> fantastic. When you feel tired after a, a, a tough day, you know, to eat a souvlaki or gyro, you know, but it, you shouldn't eat it at night, but okay. I'm going to say something now. I know that you don't want to talk about, but oh uh, preparing, yes. Should we stop now? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can stop. It, it depends on you. Okay. If you don't want to reply, okay. to respond and to talk uh, about that, that topic, okay, it's okay. I know that uh, you have adapted a family here in Albania, kind of adapted. You take care of their food monthly, you go and do the shopping for them. And uh, the reason I want to talk, I wanted to talk this, it is because it's, I found it such a noble thing and uh, it can inspire others also. Okay, so <laughs> that's why they tell me that you're very good at what you do. <laughs> so, um, um, I will be very brief on that because this is a quite personal, a personal thing. I, um, I feel very blessed uh, with the things that I have in my life. I have a very healthy and happy family. Um, I have a very good job. Um, I have people who love me around me. And uh, I had parents who gave me all the help I needed to excel in life and to do the things and make my dreams come true. And I realize very often that this is not the case for everybody. So this is just a very small gesture, actually, uh, to uh, give something back. I think it's all our obligation uh, of all of us. We should all be doing that, uh, you know, to help people in need. Not everybody is fortunate. And this doesn't have to do about money. This has to do about uh, how we think about life. And for me, it's also very important for my son to understand that the things that he is experiencing now, they're not taken for granted. Uh, people become poor every day. You saw what happened in the Ukraine. There were people in their houses one day and the other day they were fleeing outside the country with just their clothes and the suitcase. So I think it's, our, it's all our obligation to help the people who are next to us in need. How I uh, found them, I found them through a colleague, a friend of mine, who is, uh, has an organization that is supporting many families like that. And um, yeah, I've put it in my diary to do it every month. So that's it. Good thing. But are they willing to work? Yes, they are. They are. But uh, you have to understand that um, the, the, a big part of, of the problem of poverty is that it feeds itself. So if you're not... Uh, educated, it's very difficult to find a job. You find a job here and there, and then you work for one day, you don't work on another day. So that's why I'm very much uh, a fan of education. How can we uh, not feed the people, but as the Chinese say, give them the tools to feed themselves. Yeah. Uh, so for me, it's the most important thing is how can I help a little bit their kids to give them a little bit something to stimulate them to draw, to read a book, even if they cannot read the book, to just go through a book, you know, to yes. really uh, stop this vicious cir circle of poverty. I think this is the most important thing that we can do. And, and uh, at Vodafone, we're doing also a lot of things because of that, because with technology, you can end poverty or you can minimize poverty. Technology 
makes uh, education very democratic. It makes it available to the people. And, accessible, uh, yes. Accessible to the people. So, yes, yeah, so uh, we're walking the talk uh, there and uh, we are, we have a lot of programs when uh, we are building, uh, we're, we brought STEM into the schools, into public schools uh, last year, uh, together with the Ministry of Education and the, um, uh, the Vodafone Foundation. And uh, this year we're taking it to more schools. So STEM means uh, science, technology, engineering and mathematics uh, for uh, children between the age of uh, 12 and teenagers by 18 to get in touch with technology, to learn how to code, to give them the stimulus. So, so we're not going to save their lives, we give them the stimulus. And I was very touched by the first wave uh, where the teachers said that uh, up until uh, this program came into the sc those schools that uh, applied and that uh, they were chosen for it, um, the children were saying, I want to be a teacher, I want to be a farmer, I want to be, I don't know, a, a shop owner, which is all noble jobs, don't get me wrong. Eh? After this, they said, girls and boys, without exception, I want to be in technology, I want to learn how to code, and this is yes. the future. If they do it, they can do it here, they can stay in Albasan, they can stay in the village and code, as long as they have good connectivity and a laptop. You know, it doesn't require much. Kudo, kudo. Kudo, everywhere, yes. What about Stelios? He lives back and forth, ah. Athens and Tirana, <laughs> your husband? Yes, so, so Stelios is going back and forth because he has a very good job in Greece and uh, we're a very traditional family. Mm -hmm. So the man is the man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the woman is the CEO and the man is, you know, uh, we're not uh, Now we're talking. <laughs> yes, we're not Finnish or Norwegian, you know, <laughs> we're uh, Greeks. <laughs> we come from this side of the, of the neighborhood of the world. So um, he travels a lot back and forth. Uh, he used to travel before the pandemic uh, even a lot. And this makes things easier because even in Greece, when we were living permanently, uh, he was gone for two out of three, day, uh, three days every week. Uh, so now he's traveling to Tirana, then he's going to Brussels, he goes to different places, he comes here. And, you know, he's, uh, it's his home here as well. It's our home, it's his, ho his home. So, so we're very flexible, we do a lot of FaceTiming. But it works because, you know, Tirana and Athens are 55 minutes away. Yes. It's, it's nothing. It's you know, nice. it's nothing. It's like taking the bus to go to work. I have to say that, uh, you know, um, Stelios is very, very much a big part of, of what I am today. Uh, he is a big part of my success. If I can consider my career a successful mm -hmm. one, then he is a part of that because uh, he was always there to support me. Even when I was saying, ah, yeah, this is very difficult, I've had enough. No, you know, hang on in there, you can do it. Um, he was my biggest fan uh, um, throughout the 17 years and I will always be thankful for, for that, for him. You know, when I, when I went, I will always remember when I went back home and I told him, you know, Stelios, I got a CEO role, yeah, but we have to move away. Uh, how are we going to move away? You know, our son is 10. It's going to be a shock for him. You know, he said to me, we'll manage, we'll do it. Go for it. You can do it. You have, uh, you know, you have earned this in your mm -hmm. life. So he's been there every step of the way. And, and yes. this is how a, a husband should be. Yes, every woman needs, uh, deserves a stelios. <laughs> I think every woman should grab somebody by her side okay. who supports her, who supports her to fulfill her dreams. Mm. Because, you know, in this life we are, we have multiple faces. We are women, we want to be mothers, most of us. Mm. Some of them must do, want, but that's fine. Some of us want to have a career, some yeah. of us don't, but that's fine. But I think you, the, the, the biggest fight of all is to have somebody by your side who will support you to be what you want to be. And that's why they say that uh, happy wives make better CEOs. <laughs> 
I don't know if it's about being a happy wife uh, only. I mean, I think it's about um, being a balanced person mm -hmm. or trying to be a balanced person because all this this program and this uh, hectic uh, schedule, it can throw you off balance. So you need to have your roots. You need to have both your feet on the ground. You need to appreciate every little thing in life because uh, these things, they ground you, they root you so that you can lead a team because, you know, being a CEO, it is not just about uh, bringing the results of the company and looking good in, uh, you know, in the media. Being a CEO is always, uh, is also about helping your people grow. It's about helping your people keep and excel in their jobs. Uh, it's a big responsibility and to balance this responsibility with also your personal life, you need to be grounded and you need to be rooted. And that's why I'm saying that uh, my husband's uh, support in all of this was super important because he was always there to balance me, to ground me, to listen to me, to support me and to push me also. Beautiful, Katia. As we are um, about to end this uh, beautiful talk, I would say, <laughs> uh, full of energy and uh, full of optimism, I want to uh, recall something that you said to me off record. <laughs> but it's a beautiful thing. It's, um, it's kind. Your ex-boss said you something, uh, told you something before uh, coming in Albania. And it was? So it was a, a phrase that I have heard also many times ever since I have come to Albania, which is that you will go to Albania crying and you will leave Albania crying. So um, if I'm to talk about that, I cannot say that I came to Albania crying because I came to Albania as a CEO of the biggest technology company in the country. I mean, what's there to cry about, you know? And very close uh, to what I consider home only a breath away from my relatives and my friends. Um, but I can tell you that when the time will come uh, for me to uh, leave and go on my next role, which hopefully will not be very soon, uh, I will definitely go crying. Um, this country uh, has really grown on me. I feel very much like at home. We all feel, our entire family uh, feels very much like at home. We have friends coming over every month from Greece, staying with us and exploring this country with us. And they also feel like they are at home because of the hospitality, because of the surroundings. They are very, very similar. And also because I have been fortunate enough to, to have met people here who have really uh, embraced me. They have embraced my family with uh, love, with respect. So I will definitely cry the day that I will leave. Um, but, there's a but, I will come back for sure because I've made friends here. And as I said earlier, it's just a bus ride away uh, from, from Greece. And there are so many things to do here. And now that I know, you know, even to come for a weekend as a getaway, it's simply amazing. So. I will come back even after I'm gone, which hopefully will not be very soon. <laughs> and, um, and I'm really, really looking forward to see how this amazing country will evolve in the next years. I think there are amazing opportunities lying ahead. And I think that Albanians really deserve to get the best of these opportunities and to see their country, their families and the children prosper whether they are here, whether they will leave for a while and come back, or whether they will come back after they have left for many years. Oh, you are the best agent. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's no surprise uh, that you are a CEO now. Yeah, okay. <laughs>